for myself, I, uh, I, yeah, I just judge, well not judge, I just monitor what happens when I do something and I might have done certain things and I never got sick from it. I can vouch for that, I never got sick once yeah. from eating any of the stuff we've been talking about and I don't eat my own shit, no way. I don't eat dog shit, I don't eat carnivore shit, no way, I wouldn't touch it. What, what shit would you eat, Ian? Well, the only stuff I touch is stuff that's come from wild, um, like herbivore animals, and it, that's even a bit exy at times because, like, in this area here, it's a farming area, and everything gets sprayed, and these animals are eating the grass, and there's there's Roundup, there's probably I don't know all sorts of different chemicals, and it goes straight to their, um, you know, it goes in their bowels, they process it, and they shit it out. That's what you shit out, and. Um, to eat shit can be a bit exy sometimes with the chemicals you might get. You might get a lot of good bacteria, but the chemicals might be a bit of a worry too. What about, what about bat shit? That'd probably be a bit cleaner shit to eat. I don't know. They're going on about, you know, uh, leasy virus and all <coughs> that sort of thing. I, I've no idea. I, I'm still out on that. I can't make a, a decision whether... I haven't had a direct experience with sickness with bats, and I'm not about to eat their shit either. Because yeah, I guess that's, the, that's probably a concern, maybe he's picking up these... Viruses and stuff from animals, for either they raw products or feces or blood mm. or pus and flesh. Mm. Is that ever been a concern for you, getting viruses and stuff? Well, it is a it's a concern for me when the actual um, industry is totally um, wrong. Like the dairy industry, for a start, is mass production. The, the cows have got mastitis and their mm -hmm. tits. They they're producing pus. And it's just nuts. And why they pasteurise it, homogenise it, all of it, because the milk's poison anyway. Mm -hmm. And what they feed the cattle, a lot of grains and all sorts of rubbish. That's a concern. I wouldn't have any of that conventional stuff. Toothbrush, that's all I use for my dental. De toothbrush water, you can use like a recycled, recyclable toothbrush, whatever works for you. I find a, a soft brush is better and not too, you know, not too full on, you know what I mean? Like I don't, I've got friends who sort of sandpaper back their teeth and the, I don't think that's a, a option one. Next question, caloric restriction. This question from a good buddy of mine. I want to know your opinion on a caloric restriction. I've read a book um, on calorie restriction. It says less calories, more life. You know, I've had a look at that book briefly as well. It's so subjective. They say eat less. How much is eat less? There's no real caloric guidelines there. It just says, ah, oh, eat less and live more. It's just like, for me, they're just using sound bites to uh, promote a book that some fad crazy diet. Um, an example was, say, you know, myself, I'm racing, you know, A grade on the bike and I run marathons and stuff, so the, the definition of caloric restriction would be for me to do the same amount of training I'm doing and eat the same as a really, really, really sedentary person, say, about, you know, do my workload on 2,000 calories a day. <laughs> you know, it's like, I could do that for a day or two, but then, you know, I'm not going to restock my glycogen stores on 2,000 calories a day, that's for sure. So it's these books are written by people who are not athletic, have no idea about caloric understanding, and three, who don't go out into nature. Because when you go out into nature, what do we see? The animals who eat the less, they thrive the most? No way! The alpha animals, the dominant animals, the animals get to breed, the animals who eat the most of their biologically specific diet, i.e. if you're a polar bear and you eat bananas, you're not going to do well. If you're a polar bear and you eat walrus and fish, you're going to do well. And if you're the polar bear who eats the most walrus and fish, you're going to do the best. If you're a bonobo and you eat Big Macs, you're not going to do well. If you're a bonobo and you eat fruit and vegetables in your bonobo diet, you're going to do good. And if you're the bonobo who gets the most food, 
you want to become the alpha bonobo and you'll get priority of who you mate, what, where you want to eat, where you want to live, etc. The animals in nature who eat the least go downhill. You're not going to see an animal in nature who calorie restricts. You do not see this. This is some creation of, you know, someone who's got an eating disorder somewhere and writing a book about it and because they're eating junk food. And if you eat less junk food, you do better. And then they apply it to everything. You know, they throw the the chickpeas out with the chickpea water or they throw the banana skin out with the banana. You know what I mean? You want to keep the good stuff and just get rid of the slop. And for me, caloric restriction, no way. If you're eating Big Macs, yeah, you know, eat less Big Macs. So ideally, get it out of your diet. Get all your animal out of your diet. But if you eat less animal, you'll do better than someone who eats a lot of animal. But you'll do better if you get rid of the animal and eat more, you know, plant-based foods, ideally fruit as your primary carbohydrate source. But say if you're on the best diet, which is a low-fat, raw vegan diet, high in fruit and a bit of greens and low in fat, and if you don't get enough calories on that diet, you will go downhill despite eating the best diet for humans. Why? It's not my opinion. It's the nature's opinion. It's our biologically adapted diet. Fruits as a staple, a bit of greens, maybe occasionally some nuts and seeds. But fruit, as at least 98% of your total caloric content, is going to get you just prime. As long as you eat enough calories every day, at least 3,000 calories a day. Otherwise, you're not really going to get your best. You can ride your bike with you know, 50 psi in your tires on a road bike or 10 psi in your tires on a mountain bike. You can do that, but you're not going to do as good as if you pump it up fully. You're not going to do as good on a, you know, a good diet if you under eat. You're going to go so-so, you know. You won't be optimum. You won't be peak. Peak experience is what we're going for. I don't know about you, but for me, I want my life as a peak experience every day. I want a greater participation in my daily rally, and I'm not going to be doing that. If I'm undercarbed and like, oh... I don't have enough energy. I mean, I did a running race this morning, PB, I just said, mentioned it before. But then afterwards, I went to the Green Day Out Festival and I was talking to people again and again and again, giving talks and you know questions and all this and that. Where am I going to get the energy from if I'm calorie restricting? I'm going to be like, stimulant, coffee, coffee, you know, all these stimulants to get some sort of energy, which is most people doing in society. I don't want that. I hate coming down now. I want to feel high all the time. I just go to sleep at the end of it all. So calorie restriction, no way. My friend who's done this as an experiment, good friend of mine, great person, really lovely person, best of intentions, but eating the good diet, but not drinking enough water and under eating. And did a, recently did an extended, you know, I won't say the name, but extended, you know, juice thing on not enough calories and ended up in hospital getting force fed cooked food and force medicated. And that's not what anyone wants or anyone deserves, really. You know, but luckily, they, you know, they did save their life. So it's, uh, you know, eat the best diet, but eat enough. And if anyone talks about calorie restriction, you know, if anyone's writing a book about it, you know that they don't really understand. Um, so, I mean, eat a high caloric diet and live the high caloric lifestyle. You know what I mean? Who wants to sit around and just go, oh, I'm not eating much today and... Uh, I don't know what to say, you know, hello, hi, <laughs> not me, man, I want to, boom, hit it, you know, racing A-grade, riding your bike everywhere, having passionate debates with people, and just being passionate in life in general, whatever your sport is, or giving it energy to your children, if you've got kids, man, they take up a massive amount of energy, that's why I have a sect to me, I mean, I'd, have to, I'd probably have to eat double the amount of calories if I had children, because they're just like, go, 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 I mean, if you want to be really fit, just try and keep up with a five-year-old, all day, just meet, you know, shadow a five-year-old, and you'll be just like super fit, you don't need a personal trainer, just follow your kids around all day, and, and play with them, and mimic them, what a great activity that is, you, you just be burning through the calories, make sure you eat enough, otherwise you won't be able to maintain it, and your kids will frustrate you, let's have our kids fascinate us, rather than frustrate us, let's eat enough calories, from a high carb, low fat, raw vegan diet, or if you're not going to do that, at least a, a high carb, low fat, vegan diet, and you'll be dominating man, who wants, Energy, man. That's what it's about. Energy and fuel to go the distance and have a great life.